Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And in this video, I actually needed a little bit of help. So I wanna thank the guys over at Micro Center for sponsoring this video. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is installing Windows 10 onto our Chromebook. So let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is actually head over to Micro Center and I did pre-record this intro and everything on the way to Micro Center but the audio came out so bad that I had to redo it again. Now I don't live too far from a Micro Center that, so that's why I decided to head there instead of ordering it online but everything will be linked in the description down below so if you are interested in getting this particular Chromebook it is down there as well. All right, so this is the website that you actually could go to and select the brand. So example, if this is the Acer Chromebook, right? You would go over to Acer and hit next. And then you would look for the CPU type. And as far as the CPU type gone, this guy goes, it's a Celeron N3060. So I would just go and select, where is that? 3060 right here, hit next and it should come up with a few model numbers. Let me, come on, focus. And if I'm able to match this model up okay. with what's on the screen right now, which you could see, this is the Acer um, CB3532, okay? CB3532, which would be the first one. And hit next, there you go. It comes with all the firmware and instructions on what you need to do to actually flash it. So I can actually purchase this one and convert this into a Windows 10 laptop. Now, as far as this guy, this is the CB532 uh, with the Intel Quad Core Atom X5E8000. I don't think that is supported. So I'm gonna go over to Acer, next head over to um, Intel yeah see it's not even listed on here so you're not going to be able to they don't have the firmware to flash this even though that's a way much better CPU and this is a slightly better quad core CPU the 3160 for a hundred dollars so my budget I want to keep around 200 and uh, let's look for aesthetics because I kind of want to make sure it looks nice before I, I think this might be the best bang for its buck for a $15, 169 uh, 15 inch laptop. I wonder if it's on. Oh, it looks pretty good. The screen itself, not too sure what the resolution is. Does it say? 1366768, oh, that's disgusting. I think that's the best resolution we're gonna get because all these are like, 1366 by 768. Oh, this one. Look at this, $200, 14 inch, got 1080 screen, and it's got the better CPU. So, I think I might go for this one. This one has a really good look too. For only a few bucks more, $30 more, you get the 1080 screen and that makes a huge difference. So let's look this up. Um, this is the Acer Chromebook 3160. Okay, they have it down on the list. Hit next. And this is the CB3. Yep, they have it. It's listed. CB3. CB3. Hit next. It's called the Edgar laptop. Awesome. I think I'm going to go for this one. Because of According to a model number, it seems like it's gonna work. So as you can see, I actually decided to go for this Chromebook because of the screen resolution. Um, a lot of the other ones are only 1366 by 768, so it's a pretty low resolution. And knowing that this CPU is very similar to a lot of other boards that I've tested, I know it's gonna do 1080 just fine. Now, before I converted this into a Windows 10 laptop, I decided to use the Chrome OS for a bit. I've actually never owned any Chrome OS devices before, so, I wanted to see how the feeling was and I gotta say I rather enjoyed it. For a very low power system with 4 gigs of RAM and just to run this operating system it had no problems. I was able to get through 
browsing and everything but if you are a system admin it's probably best operating system to avoid because you can't install any other applications that you really need in particular like vCenter or um, you could actually SSH but there's no remote desktop applications it's just limiting by a lot and um, yeah especially if you do a lot of VPN and stuff like that Chrome OS is probably not the best choice for you that's why Windows 10 come into play now Chromebooks are known for a low powered system it's just like like a peak go or even the gdp win that i have they're low powered systems you know but they're able to do just enough the only downside to this compared to those is hard drive space and ram now this is in particular running a n3160 which is a pretty decent cpu compared to the pika go it's about 20 percent faster but again the ram is your factor and also your storage this only has 16 gigs of storage and 4 gigs of ram multitasking is kind of where your limit is at to install chrome os onto this guy the first thing you need to do is actually take it apart and remove the right protection screw now in this website it actually gives you all the steps that you need to do to flash the firmware so that you could install windows so that's basically what i'm following now there are two websites that actually do this which is coolstar.org and mrchromebook.tech and in this particular case, it was recommended to use mrchromebook.tech. Even though I use coolstore.org just to find what laptop I needed, I know it's going to support it. But mrchromebook.tech had the better firmware for the Acer uh, Broadwell uh, chipset, so I decided to go with that. Either way, it works fine. The steps are almost identical. After you remove the right protection screw, when you boot it back up on this particular board, you have to press escape, search, and power button at the same time to go into developer mode. And when you're in developer mode, it's going to unlock a lot of the features, mainly allowing you to use shell and execute software in shell. So once everything is booted, that's what you want to do. You could There's two ways to get into shell. One is holding control alt F2 and they'll drop into a shell prompt or in the browser itself, just type in shell and it'll actually pop into a shell. Once you get into shell, all you have to do is just execute that one line that they give you where you either it downloads the software and also runs it. In this particular prompt, if you're using Coolstar, you will press number one to flash the firmware, or if you're using Mr. Chromebook, you would use three to flash the firmware. Now, make sure you have an extra USB device handy so you could actually back up the ROM. Now, backing up the ROM has two benefits. One, allowing you, if anything has to brick or something broken on your Chromebook, you could always revert back. Or if you need to go back to Chrome OS, you at least have the original firmware. After you back that up and stored it in a safe place, it, you could just go right ahead and continue flashing. It's, it's just a very easy process. Once that's done, it will boot back up into like a BIOS looking like screen. At this point, you could just stick in your Windows USB and install it like you normally would on a regular laptop. Now, I would recommend installing Windows 10 Home because it's a lighter weight system. And also, there's a lot of steps to compress the installation of Windows 10 after you're done installing. Now keep in mind that after installing this guy, touchpad does not work. And it's particular to this model. There's some other models that touchpad might work, but again, Coolstar will have all the drivers right there and all the key remapping because you notice that there's no function keys up on top and it will remap all the keys so you know which one is for F1, F2, F3, and then it'll also keep the media keys as well if you hold control button. Now I gotta say, I've been using this for the past couple of days and I rather like using this on a low-end laptop. Now, I've used the PicoGo or the GDP Win, and those are low-end power devices, but it has more RAM, so multitasking was easier on those guys. But this guy has the four gigs of RAM where, yeah, multitasking is the issue, but running the same low-end power device on a bigger computer with a bigger screen is very comforting. And this has no fan on here, so it's practically silent. Also, it has a really, really good battery on this guy. It's got a 12-hour battery for Chrome OS. And in Windows 10, I was getting about 10 hours or so. With the bigger screen resolution, instead of looking at that little guy, this, this thing is pretty impressive. Now, as far as the horsepower goes, I tried to do benchmarking and it kept giving me errors with the CPU. So I wasn't able to get a correct score. I'll put a screenshot right here, but it is saying that I was able to get a three mark score of 1540 or 41 or something like that. And it didn't seem right to me. So I will have to recheck and probably use a different software just to get better benchmarks with this guy. My main particular interest actually after installing Windows 10 will be Linux because they actually have an operating system called Gallium OS, which is a Ubuntu based operating system designed for Chromebooks. So it's meant to be used on light, low powered machines like this. And I'm really excited to be testing that out as soon as possible, basically. 
So watch out for that video. So one of the things I do highly recommend is using uh, external storage because the internal storage of 16 gigabytes is not enough. So you could actually offload all the software onto this USB. And that's one of the things I've been doing. That's how I was able to run Steam and everything else. As far as the chipset goes, like I said, it's N3160. It runs 1080 videos pretty good. It runs most software pretty well, but once you get up to the multitasking factor where you're trying to load multiple Chrome tabs and everything, that's where it gets, starts getting sluggish because of the RAM limitation. Is there any way to upgrade this guy? No, I took it apart, looked at everything. There is no way to add additional RAM or storage. And even the mini PCIe that they use the Wi-Fi card on, you can't even stick a storage in there because it's not connected to the SATA. And there's no BIOS option that you could set for SATA. So there is no way to expand the storage. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. If you guys are new to this video, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I hope to see you guys next time.